Good morning. Many years ago, one of the greatest Catholic liturgists of the past century, in the 20th century, Josef Jungmann of the Society of Jesus, an Austrian Jesuit, wrote a famous treatise on the place of Christ in liturgical prayer. The question I would like to pose today is, what is the place of Christ in the Byzantine Divine Office or Liturgy of the Hours? The Byzantine Divine Office and its largely unstudied theology are the product of an extremely complex process of cultural interaction and cross-fertilization resulting in the synthesis of the two completely distinct and independent liturgical cults and cultures of Constantinople and Palestine. The first millennium saw the development of the Cathedral Rite of Constantinople from the 4th to the 10th centuries. By the end of that period, it al had already been subjected to Hagiopolite contamination during the monastic ascendancy provoked by the struggle against iconoclasm from 725 to 843, culminating in the reform of the Studite era when these two disparate traditions, the imperial rites of the capital and the ruder monastic usages of the Palestinian wilderness, courted and eventually entered an unlikely morganatic marriage. Here is how this came about. Toward the beginning of the ninth century, St. Theodore Studitis appealed for some monks of the Lavra of St. Sabas in the wilderness beyond Jerusalem to help in the struggle against iconoclasm. These monks brought with them the Jerusalem Horologion, a book of hours that they knew in Palestine, and when in 799 Theodore and some of his monks left their monastery of Sakudion in Bithynia to take over the monastery of Studios in the capital, Constantinople, these usages entered Constantinople and mingled with the Akolithia Asmatiki, as it was called, or sung cathedral rite of Hagia Sophia, the cathedral church, still in use there. The Studite monks grafted the Constantinopolitan Eucologion, or prayer book, with its prayers, diaconal litanies, and exclamations for the hours and other services, onto the quite different office of the Sabaitic monastic Horologion, or Book of Hours. At the same time, the Constantinopolitan Cathedral Psalter, or Antiphonarion as it was called, was abandoned in favor of the Jerusalem monastic Psalterion. The period from around 800 to 1204 was dominated liturgically by the progress of this Studite synthesis, a monastic rite that would ultimately supplant the quite different cathedral rite of the Constantinopolitan Typicon of the Great Church in the restoration following the Latin conquest and occupation of 1204 to 1261. Though the final stage in the evolution of this office, which I have christened neo sabaitic will gradually modify and ultimately supplant this Studite rite everywhere during the Athenite Hesychus descendancy, this neo sabaitic usage represents basically no more than a second wave of influence of the monastic usages of the Lavra of St. Sabas in the wilderness between Jerusalem and the Dead Sea. But that is only half the story. Characterizing the revival of monastic worship in Palestine in the restoration following the Persian depredations of 614 was a veritable explosion of hymnographic composition. Famous hymnographers like St. Andrew of Crete, St. John Damascene, and Theophanes Graptos immortalized this tradition and when Theophanes was sent to join St. Theodore of Studios, this hymnographic tradition also set down roots in Constantinople and was carried on there by Theodore himself, by his brother Joseph, and by others. <laughs>